Kia ora koutou everyone, welcome along to another episode of Rig Round Downs Aotearoa. I'm here today with Stephen Gill. How you doing brother? Good Great man. to have you on board. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Gill of Femeta, uh, Stephen Gill Quartet. You guys have got a big show, can I be said? Uh, yeah, just playing at uh, Fat Eddie's on January 13th. Yeah, we'll keep that in the diary. And uh, of course also Corner Sounds. Yeah. yeah. Um, been a big admirer of your sound for a few years now. I've had the pleasure of playing with you a few times. Yeah, well. man. It's a pleasure um, playing with you, man. Yeah, but uh, we always got talking about other stuff on the gigs, so let's start off with this guitar and uh, tell me all about it, man. All right. Um, so, yeah, I got this off Brad King. Um, well, no, actually, I, didn't. I got it off Sam White, who got it off Brad King, but I think he, he ended up buying it new. Um, and he since bought another 77, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a Japanese company. 77, I think, is because they started building them in 77. Um, yeah, it's it's a really nice uh, semi-hollow. It's got a center block in it. Yeah, um, yeah it's yeah. almost like a sort of, um, I guess, Les Paul Jr. slash Rickenback across shape, isn't it? Yeah, um, uh, but then again, it's like it's own thing because it's like you know um, semi hollow so like you can kind of get um, into jazz territory and it can get some pretty like you know um, yeah you know really warm mm. stuff going on but then again it still can kind of get pretty um, you know I can still get pretty raunchy like Fairly feral. yeah yeah <laughs> Like it. So I was having a bit of a read up about these, um, quite low output pickups here. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty low. Yeah, um, uh, probably a lot of that warmth comes from that, yeah? For sure. Along with the hollow body. Yeah, for sure. The pickups actually sound so good. Um, yeah, yeah, really love them. Everything's uh, stock on it, yeah? Uh, I haven't changed a thing. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, from from what I've seen of other, um, other albatrosses, they, uh, yeah, um, look pretty much the same. Like I don't think there's anything different about it. Yeah. Yeah. What um, what strings are you running, man? Um, on this, um, the elevens. Yeah. Um, I kind of go back and forth between um, like elevens with like no wound third. Yeah. Uh, and then sometimes if I know that I'm going to be doing you know like um, real like straight ahead stuff and that's all I'm going to be using it for, then I'll probably put twelves with a with a wound G on. Sure. Um, yeah. But at the moment, this is this is fine yeah. for being able to kind of still, you know, still bend stuff. Um, mm. You know, otherwise that wound wound third can just get a bit a bit too harsh, yeah. uh, a bit too hard to play uh, doing any of that stuff. Yeah. And is this is this the number one? This is the one that goes on all the gigs. It, it, no, no, this is the only the only only really goes on on uh, jazz gigs or jazz oriented gigs. To so be this fair, this is the Stephen um, Gill Quartet special. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right, okay, um, yep. Yeah, probably the Strat is the one that I probably mostly play. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Give, us, give us a wee demo of maybe your favourite setting on or something. I, I mean, just hearing you warm up before, I was... Yeah, I mean... the sound of it, man. Yeah. Um, Fan of Pat Matheny? Yeah, man. Um, I do. I do <laughs> like some Pat, man. Like um, um, but yeah, I mean, traditionally, if I was just going to be doing, you know, um, straight ahead jazz gig, it's probably going to be more like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that, yeah. Sort of, that sort of that sort of tone. Yeah. Super mellow sound. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. So uh, yeah, and the number one you said is actually the strap. Yeah. Now this is a Japanese. Uh, 50s reissue? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. apparently they don't call them reissues because they're not like a, you know, they didn't come out from Fender as like a reissue. Yeah. But apparently from, from all that I can read about him is that before 97 or 98, somewhere around there, um, they had a, a lot of American parts mm -hmm. um, and they were building all these guitars in Japan from American parts. Yeah. And uh, this is 96, I think. And so, like, from what I can tell, all the parts are, like, you know, American 
but yeah. just built in Japan. Right. And then that changed um, when they ran out of parts, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's that legacy of Leo, and it? He was uh, famously frugal with everything. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Had to be used. Yeah. Has it got that sort of classic 50s U or V V neck? It's a... Uh, um, uh, yeah, it might even be, sl yeah, slight V. Yep. It, it's not huge. Yeah, I'd say it's probably a V, yeah. Um, nice. I do like that. It's very comfortable, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fat, to be honest. Yeah. You know, but that's kind of what the what the thing is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's the 50s thing, isn't it? Yeah. Very, very thick. Um, and what makes this the number one for most of your stuff, mate? What um, is it about this or I think, a strat? Yeah, I think it's probably just a strat and, like, um... I'm not a rich man, and I picked this up for quite cheap, um, like absurdly cheap. And and I think the the reason for that is is like when I got it, yeah. You can see like in the dents here. Yeah. So what what do you make of that? Oh, not a lot. I I would call that character. Yeah. <laughs> there's like gold. You might not be able to see it under the lights, but it's actually gold there. And then oh. it's got like this green around the edges sort so of thing. Like a refinished three times. It, it's been refinished, and I don't know if the gold's just a um, an undercoat. Yeah. Um, but like, I was wondering about it. it's like, why the hell <laughs> is there like gold uh, underneath this thing? And then um, I was like looking under changing pickups out at some point, and on the underside um, it says Seafoam Green Strat. So uh, yeah, it used to be a Seafoam Green Strat, and wow. someone wow. refinished it. Yeah, and, and hasn't bothered taking the finish below off either, it's just slapped it on top. Yeah, right. yeah, and it's like, a, it's, it's thick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. The, um, yeah. Well, when it eventually does wear down, would you know? Sometimes poly ones do. Yeah, it's going to be quite a myriad of colours, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, it's poly though. Yeah. It might, uh, it might, it might probably just get this chip sort of thing where it just <laughs> starts flaking off like the old yeah, yeah. Andy Genge. You'll, just have to <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to use the old uh, sandpaper uh, sweatband on the. Yeah, arm. might might have to. <laughs> Yeah. The relic job. I'm not. I'm not too concerned about that. <laughs> uh, you said just before when you were changing pickups out here. Yeah? yeah. So have you done a bit of modding to it? Um, this is probably the third set that I've put in them uh, in the guitar. Oh, um, okay. yeah. The ones that came with were the original pickups, I think. Um, and then I put some Texas Specials in there. <laughs> they were a little too hot um, for kind of what I like. And then I got the Glen Evans Bellbirds yep. and chucked them in. Um, and overall, I'm like really pleased with them. Um, you know, like it gets, a, you know, it can get that that nice, clear sort of chord stuff happening. Yeah. Um, but it also like takes like things like fuzz. You know, really, really well. Does the um, strat thing? Yeah, it does the strat thing. I, I might change this one. This this pickup, no matter what is in it, I always have a hard time with. I just strat um, bridge, bridge pickups, pickups in strats. general. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's another set that Glenn does that where it's got like the tally like type bass plate mm -hmm. underneath it, um, and that uh, apparently has um, a lot to do with sort of how ice picky. And you can kind of reduce that um, amount of harshness. Sort of Could you play to telly for a while? Like? Yeah, for a, I still, still got that at home, um, but yeah, I, rem I remember that thing. I kind of use it on the occasional gig, but yeah, yeah, sweet, great. Um, and finally, yeah, string string gauge you're running on this year. Um, elevens on that. So. Um, yeah, and I was running elevens for the last year. Yeah. Um, and then I put some tens on a I know a couple months ago, and it's kind of just stayed there. Yeah. Um, Honestly, I think it's just just for the ease of being able to bend and stuff. If it wasn't for the fact that you know, like you had to bend this top string, you know, mm. a tone or a tone and a half sometimes, like I'd probably be quite happy with keeping the elevens. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like the way that that it feels, except for when you bend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't take like that much to get used to. Like the yeah, um, you know, the the second string, the B string, absolutely fine to bend with mm. with a set of set of elevens. Um, yeah, but yeah, that top string's just a bit of a bit of a pain. Yeah, yeah. right. So um, now you're 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 famously quite a uh, a, pedal, a pedal 
Well, I, I see all, I see pedals for sale from you all the time. So there's dude, quite a few that it's go just your board, yeah. yeah, yeah. So how long it's has never... this board been the board? <laughs> <laughs> um, Last week? Uh, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it's some iteration of it. Honestly, like, for the most part, there's a few things on there that have never changed. Yeah. Um, like, for the last five years. Yeah. Um, and then there's the the stuff that I usually take in and out, uh, like overdrives. Mm. Yeah, and just trying to find the one. Or, yeah. And the search um, continues, or...? Yeah, I've got a couple of things coming <laughs> in the mail that, that's going to replace this guy and maybe this. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, what, okay, what is your dream drive? Because you never know, someone might be listening who'll make it for you. So uh, what's your um, dream drive? That it, yeah, what would it have, the characteristic? Well, uh, like, honestly, it's probably pretty close to the broadcast. Like, there's, there's things about the broadcast that, are, like, that you can't find any, anywhere else. Like... Yeah. It's got this, um, you know, it's that sort of thing where you dig in and it's got like a bit of grit there. And I've got it on a pretty clean setting at the moment, but like, you know, you roll, you can roll back. You could put that as always on and it'd be quite pleasant. Yeah, yeah and sometimes I do. Yeah. Um, but, um, and I really love that. The thing about the second channel is though, like I, I would ideally just use to like that, use that as a slight boost. Do you know what I mean? So it's like the same thing, but just like a bit hairier. Um, but uh, <laughs> it also doesn't have, it's not like a soft clipping thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I really like the, the thing that you can get off things like a Tube Screamer, where it's like a little bit softer. It's not quite as, um, yeah, quite as harsh. Yeah, you know what I mean, and like that's that's when I started like getting really into the the fuzz face sort of thing because that's that's actually quite in, in a similar realm to this broadcast, but yeah. the broadcast can't quite do the spongy thing that you know what I mean. Yeah, and and again with the, like the stacking thing, <laughs> it's like with the with the fuzz fella and um, the fuzz face type thing with the yeah. tube screamer type thing. You kind of get into like more, um, you know, the Eric Johnson sort of vibe, you know, where it's like big and spongy and yeah, yeah, all around awesome. Yeah, give us, give us a quick hone of the sponginess, mate. sort of thing that you can just by it's, yeah. it's a tone that just never gets old sort of yeah strat when you put some put some balls into it it starts dirtying up and then you're back to clean and it's that sparkle yeah yeah, um, I'm uh, extremely jealous of the uh, Kelly 76. I've, that's on my uh, shopping list. Um, maybe next year, if Santa thinks I've been good. But uh, yeah, that's that's my second one. <laughs> I've, second I, one. Yeah, I've got one on my acoustic board as well. Because um, uh, surely that's too many, mate. It might, it might be. <laughs> I, I do, I do love it. It's like you know, uh, maybe like a little underutilized on a board like this. Yeah. Um, because I only really use it for a couple of things if I'm going like really, you know, like doing the, you know, any sort of funky chink thing. Yeah, um, like musical compressor. Yeah. yeah, and it's not, I don't, you know, it's not over the top, like clamping everything down. Yeah, um, very musical. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, and I will use it for slide you know, on the odd occasion that I do that. Yeah. And then if I, <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of this thing. <laughs> this, uh, this is the, the pseudo Matheny thing that like, again, I, I rarely use, but um, it's, it's pretty fun to play with. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> it's, it's as close as I can, I can get with with what I've got. But yeah, I like, yeah, yeah. 
Cool. Um, what's this little thing here, mate? Okay, so the Eventide H9, like, um, in order to get enough drives on the board, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, like, I, I, I used to have, like, a, a couple of modulation pedals that I'd use, like, like a chorus um, or a phase or something like that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'd read about these things a bit, and I was like, Shh, okay, I'll invest in one because... Um, I guess the idea is, you know, like Eventide make, or at least they used to make the like really big box. I guess they were like a similar size to um, like the timeline and things like that. Quite a large thing. It would take up like half the length of this board. Yeah, um, got to be pretty committed to it. Yeah, but but they would have like certain algorithms, like a certain pedal, like a modulation one where you, you'd have like all modulation or a reverb one. You can, you know, really really high quality uh, effects. Yeah. Um, and they came out with H9 that takes. Um, all these like different algorithms and you can upload them to the pedal mm -hmm. um, and it's actually kind of been a bit of a lifesaver um, and, and a money saver to be fair yeah. um, you know a lot of stuff in one pedal yeah so um, space, yeah so like it's, it's mainly used for like a lot of modulation stuff so for my like chorus you know again uh, for a phaser thing Right. Yeah. Um, the Leslie thing, which is always a uh, fun. <laughs> yeah, it's always fun. I keep thinking uh, you're going to break into badge when I hear that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the the other setting that's like quite a lot of fun is using. Um, oh, about the I guess. And getting like a pseudo organ. <laughs> noticed from, from watching you play and, and you know like I say having been lucky enough to share the stage with you a few times is you have some really unique sounds but you you work them into your playing but it never feels like you force the sound in there. Oh and thank that's, you. That's, that's what that's I really <laughs> admire about the way you use pedals. I don't know if I'd say that. I, sometimes I feel like like especially when you get a new sound and like you just butcher it like or you overuse it in, in too many scenarios where maybe you should just like Oh, okay, chill no. out a bit. <laughs> no, I do, um, man. I, I like your approach. Hey? I, I think it's, it's, it's cool. You know, you, yeah, you, you, you've got your sounds, and, and you know, you create new sounds, but and you put them into 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 your playing. But it's it's always musical to my ears. Oh, so. thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the idea of this board, like, as I wanted it as small as possible, but that had like as much versatility. Yeah. Um, yeah. The one that can go on all the gigs. Yeah. 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 Well, speaking of, so you've kept this pretty uh, pretty compact. <clears throat> a lot going on here. Mm. Um, speaking of not so compact, you're running two amps. This yeah. is your general setup. Yeah, you've got it, the two. It's, it's the general setup for when I'm playing with the meta, um, yeah. or or you know, um, cover gigs and stuff, or particularly wedding gigs. Yep. The main the main impetus for it at the beginning was the fact that I've had a couple of gigs where like um, an amp that I was running had like crapped out for yeah. whatever reason and um, even you know I guess the gear that I had at that time putting it putting like a you know a guitar direct box sort of thing through a PA just never did it for me like it always yeah. sort of made, made you feel like oh, you, you didn't have enough there or yeah. yeah so like anyway I, I, was, I started bringing two amps around for them and then I started like experimenting with sort of stereo stuff and yeah um, so it's an AC15 this one aren't yeah yeah AC15 and the Deluxe Reverb, yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, any reason for combining those two? Um, Qualities of each that go together? Yeah, well, like... You're, you don't split them, right? You're just constantly running through both? Um, through both. And, like, yeah. I'm running stereo out from here. Yeah. Um, and so, like, for certain effects, particularly, like, the chorus or, um, like, even in the, the old edge delay thing. Yeah. You know, that's... It's like bouncing between the two, and that, that stuff's always real fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that stuff, yeah, yeah. Make, makes a, makes a big difference. To be fair. Tasty. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love it. I, I think the reason why was the because uh, I used to have the deluxe reverb and uh, hot rod deluxe, and they're like, you know, very similar. 
yeah. and tone. Um, they are different amps and they do have like, you know, yeah. a, a little bit of difference. Like the problem with that setup though was that this, this thing's 22 watts, the deluxe reverb. Um, and the Hot Rod Deluxe is 40, and, and it was just, you know what I mean? So it was like a huge kind of difference. Yeah. Um, so between the fact that they kind of sounded, had a similar thing going on about them, yeah. um, and they were, one was like way louder and everything than the other. Um, yeah, I ended up swapping that directly for the AC-15. And the reason for the AC-15, as I'm sure like some viewers will know, is like Josh Smith runs, like his, his amp setup is pretty much like a, a super reverb in an AC-30. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I tried it out before I actually did the swap and I, I did really like it. So um, yeah, I, I kept it. Yeah. Um, I think there's something about the fact that, you know, the Vox breaks up way sooner so like uh, you know when you're using a really heavy sound or or even not sometimes you know there's this like grit that's underneath the mm -hmm. um the the brightness and the sort of little bit more clarity of the deluxe reverb yeah yeah great man oh i'll tell you what um i'm sure well i will, of course always and i'm sure the viewers would love to hear you just have a wee uh flat give us a give us a taste of of what this thing can do and you know, i'll step back for a minute <laughs> All right. I'll give some of this go go. Stephen Gill. Dude, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show and, uh, you know, finally finally getting a, a, a rundown, no pun intended, <laughs> of, of, yeah, of what, what makes your sound your sound. Um, no, looking forward to hearing it some more, man. Yeah, man. Thank you, Clem. Great to have you on board. Cheers. See you next time. Yeah, man.